My family thinks I basically send emails all day. Well, I'm pretty sure my mother thinks I work with building contractors, even after 14 years of this. You know, the people who hang your drywall, build your house, things like that, versus the IT contractors that we really work with. Well, yeah, what do you think that I do? Help people get jobs. <laughs> we discover and build relationships with clients. We determine the best project solutions for our clients. We help people continue their careers by finding them their next project. The most fun part about my job is getting to meet and talk with people from all across the country and build relationships. Best part of my job is the same as it was 14 years ago. Calling a candidate and offering them a job with one of our clients never gets old. Consulting and providing solutions to my clients that drive growth for their business. It's incredible that so many people from different backgrounds can come together to achieve one goal, to find a great candidate to complete a project for one of our clients. I love that everyone is so accommodating and willing to help, especially for new employees. Working at Apex Systems has taught me that hard work and determination pays off. Apex has taught me that work can be a place where you enjoy yourself and have fun. It's a work hard, play hard environment, which keeps it fun. Motivated. Helpful. Competitive. Hardworking. Energetic. Fun. Resilient. Adaptable. Diverse. Thanks, Brandon, and thanks everyone for joining us today to learn a little bit more about Apex and what it's like to have a career in sales. Apex Systems is a world-class technology services business that helps to provide solutions to fulfill our clients' needs. We achieve this by using our unique deployment model to build qualified and industry specialized teams that combine with proven solutions and service models to produce results. We were founded in 1995 and had grown to have over 70 North American markets with over 625 sales and recruiting staff who support our more than a thousand clients and our thousands of consultants. At Apex Systems, we have strived to uphold our four core values. Those values are will to win, do the right thing, make others better, and professionalism. Two of the main roles we're hiring for here at Apex are our sales recruiter roles and our account management roles. Sales recruiters are inside sales representatives who are sharing amazing job opportunities with our skilled candidates. To help their clients fill high priority positions, sales recruiters post jobs, find qualified candidates, and manage the candidate experience throughout the recruitment process after job placement. Account, manager are, account managers are outside sales representatives who build relationships with their clients, ensure they are getting the candidate results they're looking for. Account managers play a pivotal role here at Apex, delivering qualified hiring solutions to top companies in a specific territory or business vertical. Here at Apex, our employees come first. We put a strong emphasis on career training to help all employees kick off their career on the right foot and provide them the ability to grow both professionally and personally in their time here at Apex. The opportunity to advance your career is something Apex really prides themselves on. We, with a focus on performance over tenure, our employees have the ability to advance quickly. In addition to the ability to grow and be rewarded for your hard work, Apex offers competitive benefits with perks. My favorite is getting your birthday off each year. At Apex, we have an employee resource group program that allows Apex employees to connect with others who have similar backgrounds or shared interests that they can kind of bond with people within the organization. What is it like to work here at Apex? In our time working from home, we've been able to keep our culture and spirit alive through theme days, Zoom, and virtual celebrations. In addition to working hard, we also like to collaborate, motivate each other, and celebrate success when we're in the office. One of the things we really pride ourselves on is having a team environment. So in addition to working hard in the office, we like to spend a lot of time out of the office having fun. Some of the outings we've been able to do in the past are bowling, field days, outdoor sports, scavenger hunts, and volunteering. Hopefully you've been able to see that the heart of Apex is our people and you'll be able to learn more about that through talking to our panelists. Now we'll meet some of our panel. I'll have each of them introduce themselves and share what made them choose Apex in the first place. Chance, we'll start with you. Hi everyone, my name is Chance Sweat. I'm a senior account manager here in our Orlando, Florida office. Um, I came to Apex four years ago after working as an inside sales rep at a, uh, a specialty pharmacy and medical device company. And I really came here because I wanted outside sales experience and I wanted to have a little bit more of a challenge and 
you know, move from that sales assistant role to an actual uh, account manager role. All right, Kristen, we will move to you. Thanks, Chance, and thanks, Ashton. Hi, I'm Kristen McClung. I'm an associate industry director. I've been with Apex for about 12 years now. And one of the things that really um, made me want to choose Apex was some of the values that Ashton actually already mentioned um, in her presentation. Really was working for looking for professional environments, um, an environment that really showcased like that will to win and that competitive spirit. Um, the organization I found is really, we do strive on wanting to do the right thing and to make others better. So that's why I chose Apex. Kyle, we'll go to you now. Sounds good. Thanks, Ashton. So, yep, Kyle Burns out of the Denver branch. I have been with Apex for, gosh, coming up on 11 years next month, which would be great. And um, I'm an account executive. And reasons that I picked Apex. So, after I graduated, I'd worked for a year or two. I was working for a window manufacturer and I wanted, I knew I wanted to get into sales in some capacity, but I, I wasn't sure if that company that I was with at the time was the right place or if I wanted to do it somewhere else. And so, um, started the interview process with other companies and Apex stood out to me because it really met two of the things that I was looking for that were most important to me in a career. Um, first of, first and foremost was going to be helping people, helping others and then being compensated based on effort. And so those were the two things that I, I knew I wanted for myself that would help me stay motivated day in and day out and something that I, I would be bought in on. Um, what I also, uh, I guess another thing that was really attractive to me about Apex was um, the work-life balance. I had interviewed with another organization and we got to the final stage. And I remember sitting there talking to um, the, you know, the boss and the, you know, asked the question about work-life balance. And he said, you can expect for the first three to five years uh, to dedicate about 80 hours a week. And I'm not the best at math, but like in quick math, I'm thinking, okay, seven times 10, that's 70 hours a week. And that's seven days a week. And I'm thinking, okay, and then we're adding 10 more hours to that. That's probably not going to be for me. Right. And so anyway, work-life balance was a big piece. Apex offers that as well. And then lastly, it was culture. It just it stood out to me when I got to meet everyone that I'd be working with that we had a lot of similarities across the board. Awesome. Mike, we'll go to you next. Uh, I think my background messed up, but um, hi, my name is Mike Warren. Um, I'm an account manager at Apex Systems. Uh, this is actually my first job out of college, uh, which I was blessed to be able to accept before COVID last year. So it's kind of been a wild ride. Um, the reason I chose Apex over the other competitors is because obviously the people um, during my interview, I felt like I was a part of the team already, um, have great leadership in the branch that I'm from as well. Um, another reason is that it's all based on merit. So what you put in is what you get out of it. Um, so I really like that aspect about it as well. Great, and last but not least, Taylor. Hi, my name is Taylor England, I'm the delivery manager of the Raleigh office. Uh, I've been with Apex for going on nine years. Um, and as far as what brought me to Apex, um, it was a job. I, I needed a job. Um, I wasn't really sure. I had just graduated from college. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I thought I wanted to be a nurse, um, but it wasn't really until I got into Apex and started understanding the roles um, and how money motivated I actually was after being a, a broke college student for many years. Um, and so I was excited to make money. I was excited to be around like-minded people who were hard workers, um, who had that like will to win spirit, um, felt that it was an environment that was going to improve me as a person and also as a professional. Um, and that I was going to get a lot of investment on my end. And, um, you know, like I said, I wanted to be around hardworking people, um, you know, people who are going to show up for themselves, hold themselves accountable. And I could definitely see that, um, not only in my teammates, but also, also in other offices. Um, and then again, the financial opportunity and growth opportunity. So, those are some of the reasons. And then, of course, in the people, um, you know, I'm the type of person where I'll work hard no matter where I, I, I work, but I want to be around people that um, are going to help me rise when I might have fallen down and celebrate uh, the win. So the people, hands down, have been such a blessing to be a part of for the last nine years. So. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing your stories. I think that's great. Um, we're going to move into some question and answer. So we'll start with a couple of questions and then hopefully we'll get some more live questions as we go through them. So 
We will start with uh, one we got a lot. What are traits and characteristics that are needed for someone to work in this role? I can hop on that one. Awesome. So I, I think that there's there's quite a few things that we look for for someone to be successful for Apex long term, right? And we're not looking for people to join in. Yeah, you know, we want to set people up for success from the get go. And some of the things that we target or that we look for here, and I know that this is something we we look for in Denver specifically, but this is also, I think, throughout the country, right? Just as Apex as a company, um, motivators are huge. Do your motivators align, and are they going to be sustainable motivators? Right? Like some of the things that that motivate me on a daily is again, like I like I said earlier, helping others. That's something that's going to be just ingrained in me for the long haul. That's not just something that's short term. Um, another thing for me personally is to be able to provide for myself and my family. That's really key for me. And for me to be able to do that, I need to be able to perform and that's holding my, that's helping me uh, hold myself accountable on a, a daily, um, interpersonal skills are really important in our world. Um, you know, the way that we interact with, with others, not only internally, but with our clients and with our, with our contractors, um, you need to have, uh, the ability to create some rapport and to be able to sustain relationships. Um, resiliency is high. I think that, uh, Taylor hit on this earlier, but, you know, sometimes there are days and there are even weeks where we have downtimes and things aren't going right. And we need others to be able to p help pick us up, which is part of our culture, but it's also something that you have to have internally, right? Like you have to have some resiliency. You have to be able to dust yourself off, pick yourself up and get going again in the right direction. Cause if you feel sorry for yourself for too long, you're not going to be able to do anything positive for, for yourself in this job. Um, results oriented is also really important. Um, we do have targets that we have to hit on a, you know, a daily basis, a weekly basis, quarterly, annually. Right. And so we always have a target in, in our sites on, on things that we want to do in order to be successful. And we have different ways to define success here at Apex. And uh, a lot of that is metrics driven. And so being results oriented is going to be really helpful. Um, I think that uh, self-management is important as well, right? I can't tell you how many times I have to reprioritize my to-do list on a daily, uh, probably double digits. And so that's just something that, that comes with the territory. And so part of self-management is time management, multitasking as well. Um, those are some things that we look for um, in, in folks that are going to do well here at Apex. Um, I would also say teamwork is really important. Uh, there's, there's that saying, you know, it takes a village. And that, that's very true here at Apex. We have a lot of moving parts. We have a lot of teams that we rely on and that we work with on a daily. And so in order to be successful here, you have to work with, you know, just your recruiters, your leadership team. Uh, back office staff that are going to help you get everything done from a compliance standpoint. It's all a part of it. And so you really need to be able to, to function well with a lot of different groups. Um, last two things I'll, I'll mention really quickly is, is, you know, you need to be competitive and a, a big part of that. Some people think that it's just sports, right? It's not just sports. I have family members. I have my grandma who is like the most competitive person within board games, right? Wasn't the most athletic person, but She's just incredibly competitive, right? And I don't know, she maybe passed those genes along to me. And so I think that being competitive is really important here. I think I mentioned this earlier, but we do have, you know, we have metrics that we're held to, but we also have reports that are sent out two times a week that let you know exactly where you stand, not only internally with your, your, your team within your branch, but also your team as a, as a whole within Apex as a whole, right? And so I know exactly where I stand every single day because we are numbered off with, hey, where are you with not only within your branch, but where do you stack up with your competition internally um, nationwide? And it's great because there's always, almost always, right? There's some people that are at the top and there's nowhere else to look, but they got to keep driving to, to stay there. But there's a lot of people that, you know, I have targets where I'm like, hey, I want to see if I can compete with this person or that person. And I'm always pushing myself. And I think that that's a healthy competitive uh, angle that I take on it. And I, I think that that's something that we look for and also competing against other companies too. Um, we have, a, it's a very competitive space that Apex plays in. And so we want to make sure that we're finding people that are going to represent Apex well, and that are going to be able to compete and, and, and get us business opposed to maybe our competitors getting that business. And so that's something that we look for. So com being competitive across the board is going to be important for someone here at Apex. And then lastly is just self-motivation, right? 
it's being able to have that drive day in and day out on, uh, uh, cause no one else is going to be able to create that for you. That's something that you got to have yourself. So maybe a little bit long winded, but I, I think I covered most things of what apex looks for. Definitely. Thank you, Kyle. Next question we'll go to is how much prior sales experience do you require to be considered for a position within the company? Yeah, this one, Ashton. Um, so the short answer is none. You don't need any sales experience to come in. Um, I will say you do find some people in this role like myself who have some prior sales experience because honestly, not a lot of people dream of growing up and going into staffing. I think I can count on one hand how many people I know at Apex that that's what they wanted to do when they were in college. Um, but it does help, right? Kind of to Kyle's point, there's some resiliency that you kind of learn um, in kind of your first sales role that you know, you're, you don't make money overnight, right? It's not like the movies where suddenly you're, you know, playing at the big table in, in Vegas because you're making so much money in sales. It doesn't always happen like that. It can, um, but, you know, uh, things are a little bit different at Apex where our sales cycles aren't quick, like they might be with software or um, medical devices, for example. Uh, and you're working with these managers and these clients for sometimes decades, right? Or even longer than that if um, you're someone who's been at Apex, you know, since the beginning. Um, can help, but you definitely don't need it. It's not going to hinder you at all because our sales training program here is pretty thorough. Awesome. Another question we got a lot is what does a day in the role look like? So day to day, what are we doing? How does the day start? That kind of thing. I can take that one, Ashton. So <laughs> um, a day in the life of either a recruiter and account manager, really no day is like the other. So um, there's always things that kind of come up un unexpectedly. But I would say if you're looking at the recruiter role, um, you know, you're typically calling around like 50 to even maybe 100 candidates per day. And you're typically working on a couple of different um, job openings to place with our clients. So you're constantly calling people that are on the open job market, you know, doing... Um, networking through tools like LinkedIn or some of the job boards and really just calling to see um, and qualify um, people for particular positions for our clients. You're doing a lot of the things, I think Kyle mentioned this stuff, you're doing a lot of things like working with internal teams um, to try to help collaborate and find the right talent for your clients. Um, and then I would also say that, you know, it's a, it's a big challenge with time management. So really just trying to stagger your day to make sure that you can call out to all those candidates and that you can fill your job roles. Gosh, it seems like at the end of the night, you always have more work that could be done, but thankfully we all are able to sort of turn it off and, and, you know, refresh and go on to the next day. So, um, as an account manager, you know, you're doing similar type things. So now, especially in a virtual environment, we're doing a lot of our, um, you know, meetings with our managers over um, platforms like Zoom, like we are just now, um, but also giving our clients calls and really just partnering with some of the largest companies like Fortune 500 companies to find the right um, technical talent for our clients to achieve you know, their own projects. So that's kind of what a day in the life looks like. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Next question is, what are some of the practical and technical skills that will be applied on the job? I can go ahead and take this one. Um, in terms of technical, you really won't need any as you'll go through the training program. Uh, you'll learn all the ins and outs of, you know, how to make a search string, what to look for in a resume and, you know, keywords and such. Um, depending on if you're a recruiter or an account manager, you're going to need both of those skills to decipher what exactly the client's looking for. Um, practically, I would say organization is a big piece of the job. Um, as myself, as I got promoted as to an account manager, I had to take over a bunch of pretty high activity accounts. And, you know, I think the next day I went on and bought a whiteboard and started writing everything down and dividing up the clients and whatnot. So a lot of organization is required for the job. And also a lot of follow up too. whether you're a recruiter or an account manager, following up with the managers, following up with the candidates is going to that's just one of the great ways you can be successful at this job as well. Great. Thanks, Mike. Um, let's see, we'll move to what are some opportunities for advancement and growth within the role in the company? I can take that one. Um, so speaking from myself and my own experience, I started out in the Raleigh office as um, the administrative assistant. Again, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do when I graduated. Um, I didn't actually really realize I had a lot of those attributes that my teammates have kind of mentioned until getting and starting working at Apex. Um, and, you know, within six months of the role, I quickly realized that I had a lot of those. I was competitive. And what was nice about the competitive piece is 
again, when I thought of sales, I thought kind of like cutthroat, um, you know, hardcore sales, business to business. And when I realized that this type of sale was more of relationship building, um, it was a very supportive team environment. We wanted to see each other win. We had team goals that, you know, all aligned with wanting to see each other win. Um, I, I realized I kind of wanted to take a shot at it. And, um, you know, I was nervous about the commission. I was nervous about the metrics. I had never done that before. Um, but, you know, we had great leadership. Um, we have a great training program. And through that support, I was able to get kind of my feet underneath me pretty quickly in the recruiter role. And the nice thing about Apex, and again, I'm speaking from my own experience, but also I've seen a ton of my colleagues in the nine years that I've been here um, kind of carve their own path at Apex. Um, so, you know, we are a $2 billion company. We're publicly traded for all intents and purposes, very corporate America. But um, what I love about Apex is they definitely embody those core values and they still have that a smaller shop type feel where you can, like I said, carve your own path and kind of create your own future. So um, I myself was interested in training and leadership. And so I vocalized that with my managers on a regular basis. We talked about that in performance reviews um, and you know they heard me and they started involving me in more training and leadership. And through that, I became the team lead got some responsibilities. Um, and, you know, now here I am, um, as a senior delivery manager, every, you know, up until my sixth year, every year I had a different job title. I'd, you know, been promoted a couple of times and, um, you know, that, that was through obviously my leadership, but through my hard work and merit, um, like others have mentioned. Um, so it was really nice to feel supported and have a path. And, you know, as long as I was vocalizing that. Um, but like I said, I've seen colleagues kind of create an opportunity for themselves as well. Um, I've had friends who said, hey, I think there's a gap here. I'd like to create like a business case to see if we can get a position like this created. And they've done that. Um, and then, you know, many of my colleagues have moved into sales and consulting services. And again, it's kind of one of those things because you do start out so early in your career, you don't know what you don't know, kind of. Um, and so it's, it's through learning others' roles and learning more about, um, you know, Apex and the services that we offer um, is kind of what opens the door for you um, and allows you to be able to kind of get to know what you would be interested in and what you're, what you're good at. Um, so it's a, it's a very supportive environment as far as like the growth opportunity. Perfect. Thanks, Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting a lot of questions about remote work. So we'll start with what does Apex do for team building and fun during remote work? Yeah, so this has actually been one of my favorite parts about COVID, if I can say that, is the remote change, right? I have a, a, a boss who was not very Zoom literate, if you will, from the very beginning. And now he is doing all kinds of Jeopardy games. And I mentioned to the panelists right before this, we just did the Dundee Awards in Orlando office uh, where everyone got an award for something that they're known for. And he had us all with the Chili's backgrounds, right, from the office to, to make it fun. Um, we did a virtual escape room recently, um, everyone from their own home and a few of us from the office that uh, were allowed back in. So it's been an adaptation. You know, pre-COVID, we were, um, you know, doing scavenger hunts around Orlando or uh, we went, all went to the beach once before for um, a concert over there at the band shell. Uh, so things are different, but our office, we honestly can't not go two or three weeks without hanging out with each other in some way. So a lot of virtual happy hours or virtual events as much as we can and as much as we can stand each other uh, to at least kind of keep the collaboration going. Yeah, it was, oh, go ahead, it was definitely a, a quick switch overnight. We are a relationship driven, you know, industry. So it, we've been very innovative and it's kind of nice because it's forced us to like really catch up with any type of like technology um, and just having that, you know, flexibility and all of those things. So it's been forced innovation, I call it. Um, but I think we definitely have made up for it the best that we can with that virtual aspect. Um, you know, I think it's actually helped with just like in office communication and certain things that have come out of it um, that I think have improved us for the best. Awesome. That is great. We got some questions about volunteering with Apex. You know, how are we open to volunteering? What are the, some of the things that we do to volunteer as a company or allow people to volunteer during their time at Apex? I know a lot of offices have, um, we do have a national philanthropy, American Cancer Society. Um, and I know a lot of offices have a philanthropy 
a philanthropy representative in their office that joins on more of a larger platform. Um, and then there are local initiatives for you and your branch um, to meet philanthropy goals. Um, so it's kind of tying back to what I said, if you're interested in something even outside of your job skill set, if you're interested in philanthropy, we have celebration committees, birthday committees. Um, you know, if you're interested in something like that, we encourage you to get involved um, and make it fun and, and help in, engage and involve your office um, so that it, you know, can kind of check a lot of those boxes as well. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd love to add on to that, Taylor. One of the things you said earlier, um, you know, with us being a big corporation, right, $2 billion, one of my favorite things about Apex is that all of the offices are their own little ecosystem as well, right? So you have this small, I mean, Orlando is 26 people, um, but if I need help, I can go beyond that to get help from our corporate side. Um, but also because we're such a small team um, in each of our locations, and some offices are much bigger, obviously Raleigh makes us look like a, a tiny office. But um, recently for philanthropy, we found out that there was a school here in Orlando um, for kids with special needs that needed help for um, extra supplies. So we, uh, this is actually back in November and this has been here since then, but we did no shave November for the guys so you could grow the ugliest mustache. And obviously I won and we kept it going, but we raised $2,000 just in our Orlando office. So in addition to doing other philanthropy things, you know, you have a lot of say in your own local market because your office is so small. And I think those are great examples of things that we do as a company, you know, for our national philanthropy, but also finding local organizations. One other thing we also do is quarter of caring. So the last quarter of the year, you know, a lot of offices will pick something to go do as an office or allow people to take the time to do that. Food drives, can drives, you know, setting up different things around that time of year. So that's something we also do in regards to volunteering. Um, next question we'll go to is what are the metrics of success that are used to evaluate performance in these roles? I can mm. take, take that one a little bit, or if you yeah. go ahead, you got it. You can speak. I'll take the recruiter you, side. You do recruiter. I'll, I'll go away. Yeah. I'll do. Okay. I'll do recruiter. So um, there's a couple of different things that we look at when it comes to metrics. So ultimately our goal is to hire candidates to fulfill our clients needs, right? That's, that's the goal is we want our clients needs to be fulfilled. Um, and so as a recruiter, our job is to fulfill them. Um, so we look at, uh, essentially three things. How many candidates are you sending down weekly? Of those candidates, how many of them are getting hired? And of the candidates that are getting hired, how much money is essentially that yielding? And so those are the big things that we look at. Um, I know someone had mentioned kind of like what happens when you don't meet those metrics. So um, you know, our goal is to make you successful. If you're successful, we're successful. So I think what we always look for when it comes to an area that might be weaker is we kind of just like peel back the onion and say like, okay, if we're not getting enough candidates, we want to evaluate that. Is it, you know, are we not making enough calls? Are we not calling the right people? Are, you know, is it the positions that we're on? Um, we want to seek to understand. And that's really big for us so that we can work on whatever may be causing that issue. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that there is there is a progression. It's not an overnight fix usually. Um, and so we just want to see upwards, you know, progression towards whatever goal we might be, you know, challenged on. That's for the recruiters. <laughs> right on. And then for account managers, you know, we, we have, I would say similar metrics in, in a few of our categories. And then there's other, other categories that we look for as well. So <clears throat> one of the big ones is activities, right? Whether that's going to be an out of office activity with, uh, with a hiring manager, hiring VP, um, C level executive, whoever it is we're going to go meet. So we have out of office activities, we have meetings, um, we have lunches. Sometimes we even have, you know, categories that, that fall within touches. So, and a touch would be categorized as, um, something as simple as, you know, when you're going to walk someone in for their first day of work, obviously this is me referencing everything pre COVID. A lot of things changed once we, we went into COVID, you can't really do walk-ins as much as we used to on a regular, but a touch, just, just having a, a point of contact and, and letting them know like, Hey, I'm here. If you need anything, uh, you know, I'm your point of contact and uh, I'm around, right? And so there's different categories that we that we evaluate there. Then it's also quality of meetings too, right? If, if you're doing conversations with people or if you're having conversations with managers on the account manager front to, uh, I don't know, basically a meeting just to have a meeting, that doesn't really add value to us. It doesn't really add value to them. But if you're having conversations around strategy, if you're having conversations around initiatives or what the, the, the client's goals are for the year and you're able to report back to, 
to, to your leadership within Apex and, and better understand how we can facilitate or help with what those initiatives are, those are going to be more heavily weighed in some of our metrics. And so those are the things that we really try to try to put more emphasis on is having those quality conversations and relationships, because that's what's going to drive our business forward. So um, those are that's a, a part of the metrics. And then there's also the, the productivity, right? Like how many people are we putting to work? What kind of projects are we winning? Um, so it's all a part of the evaluation process when it comes to metrics. Perfect. Um, let's see. We got a question around um, what's employee resource groups. So like we were talking about the different ones that we have within Apex. So women at Apex, Epic at Apex, different ones, Pride at Apex that we talk about. So we got questions about, you know, how people are able to get involved in those and what that looks like, especially across the country. Are there ways that, you know, those groups get together or different things like that? I can talk a little bit about that, Ashton. So yeah, um, we have different groups. Ashton mentioned a lot of them. Um, we have like 50 and forward group. Um, we have families at Apex. We have Pride at Apex. So we have a lot of different groups that you can become involved in. And those are more on a national basis. So it's great that you can connect with some of your colleagues across the nation in different ways. Um, and then also, it's just fun for us to share um, some, some, you know, like helpful art articles or maybe like a, something that a podcast or a documentary that we saw, or, you know, even just like helpful tips for taking care of your children. Um, I have small kids and so helpful tips, taking care of your children while they maybe were stuck at home during COVID, um, has been helpful to me. And just like knowing that I have a greater community, um, at Apex has been really helpful, especially going through, um, this last year and a lot of changes. Um, so yeah. Great. Um, we got a fun one that was, what was one thing that you wish you had been told before going into a career in sales? Oh, I've, I feel like I've got this one. I learned this lesson the hard way. Um, so I would say there's a lot of ups and downs. Uh, someone asked, I think too, that kind of ties into this, what's the hardest part about being in sales? For me, it was it's the ups and downs for sure. So I kind of mid year or midway through my first year in recruiting, I kind of hit a slump. I had a fast start and I was like, what is going on? And so, um, you know, I really evaluated who are the successful people at Apex and what are some of the attributes that they have and how can I emulate that? I'm a hard worker. I'm a good communicator. I have that, but like, what is the secret sauce? And the biggest thing was being able to ride the ups and downs of sales. There's a lot of ups and when they're up, it's great. And you know, there's definitely lows. Um, and I think given that this is relationship driven sales, right? We're dealing with people, they can be unreliable. And so I kind of just taught myself to ride the way, ride the wave and definitely celebrate. But when the lows are low, just know that, you know, it's very cyclical and um, tomorrow's a new day, you know, a new week, a new quarter. Um, and to not let, you know, one bad day or one bad situation be the reason why I'm kind of stuck, you know, in a funk for the rest of the week or month or quarter um, and just shake it off and know that um, I guess through time, I've just learned that, like I said, it's very cyclical and, you know, you might have a bad day, but it always turns around um, and people are people and realizing that I can't control anyone but myself um, and, making sure that I'm doing what I can in order to control that and everything else is, it is what it is. That is great. Um, so now we'll kind of talk a little bit about, we touched on the ideal candidate. Now we've gotten some questions around, you know, what makes the most successful salespeople? How do people set themselves up to be the next success story at Apex? So any kind of tricks of the trade, things that you were like, yes, this puts you above and beyond in addition to being the ideal candidate that we touched on earlier with Kyle, but what does it look like to go above and beyond and be the next success story? Or the easiest way to set yourself up for success long-term is don't quit. Don't give up, right? It's so easy to just say, oh, that person didn't call me back. I'm going to write them off for good, right? That's not our world, right? It's usually like, I think there's some kind of stat out there where it's like after 12 attempts, that's when you finally start to break into relationships and actually start to create rapport with your targets. And so it's easy to give up after the first few attempts and just say like, oh, this, this one isn't gonna work out. I'm gonna go look elsewhere. And that's not really, uh, that, that's not really gonna do yourself any justice. So I would just say, you gotta come in there and you, you gotta know that it's gonna take a while. Like Chance said, this isn't an overnight success flash of brilliance and you're gonna be rich right away. And, and it's not, that's not how we're set up, right? This is a long-term play. It's a long-term actual career. And, and with that comes time. 
So uh, just be patient and be persistent. Those are two words that I keep in the back pocket every single day when I go to work, patience and persistence, because those are two words to really keep in mind. Yeah. And I just piggyback off this, like patience, persistence, and also just like the willingness to work hard. Um, I think just goes such a long way. And, um, you know, we're not, we're not like (laughs) doing anything. We're not building anything here instead, you know, we're working hard for our clients to put people to work. So the more that you kind of like trust in the process and you rely back onto that hard work ethic, um, you know, we have people around you, we have leadership around you that's going to support you to really push you in the right way to succeed here. So as long as you're a hard worker, persistent, and you have some patience, you'll probably do pretty well here at Apex. Kind of resiliency to that too, yeah. just being resilient, being able to pick yourself back up. I mean, there's no matter what job you're in, whether it's sales or not, there's going to be highs and lows. Um, and realizing that does get a little bit exasperated being in sales and knowing that ahead of time is definitely something that, like I said, the top performers, they most of that that they have in common is that really strong resiliency um, and understanding that they just need to do what they do well and the rest kind of falls into place. Yeah, I mean, my first year at Apex, my first seven months, I was not a stellar account manager. I was hitting the metrics I needed to hit, right? So I wasn't in jeopardy of you know being reprimanded or being written up or anything like that, but my accounts just weren't performing at the time. And then from month eight to month 11, I had the fastest run in Orlando history to, you know, two really big milestones. Um, and so one of the blessings that come with working for Apex is unlike, well, I wanted to go into medical device at first. That was my big thing out of college. I want to make a ton of money in medical devices. There's so much money to be there. Um, and then I show up in staffing and I'm like, there's so much more money in staffing than there was in medical devices. Like people don't believe it, but there is. Um, and one of the blessings, like I was saying, is that you know, if I worked for a medical device company, like, you know, some of the big names out there, and then some other big name came in and built a better product, well, suddenly I'm at a disadvantage. But when you're working with Apex, all of your candidates are always learning the new skills, your clients are always adapting. So you always have a fresh new product, if you will, ready to sell. So as long as the company keeps doing what it's doing, you keep working on your own skills, then the product basically improves itself. So you're always at an advantage. I think too, to answer Noah's... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say that um, there's really only two things that you'd probably need for this job to be successful, and that's just attitude and effort. Um, both of those don't take any skill to be successful. If you wake up with a good attitude, then you're already off to a good day. And then if you you know match the effort along with that, you know things are falling in place. We got some questions around training, so I'll have one of you speak to what the recruiter training looks like, and then one of you speak to what it looks like to train an account manager, and maybe beyond that as you continue to grow in the role take the recruiter one. Um, So for recruiter training, it's a pretty robust training program. We kind of cover every facet of learning. So we have live role plays, webinars, we have workbook work. Um, You know, now with us being remote, we do a lot of virtual shadowing so that you can see someone else doing the role. Um, You know, we watch you do the role. Um, So like I said, it covers every facet of learning and um, it it is definitely a, a four week formal program um, where you have like set action items that you need to complete. It's not like you're on your own. It's a combination with your leader in the branch and also um, the leaders in our back office training program. Um, And, you know, I think that it's honestly increased twofold with being remote just because of all the support that you get, um, how formal the programs become. Um, And it's definitely, you know, it can be somewhat overwhelming just because you are learning, you know, about technologies, different languages. Um, It can feel like you're learning a new language at times. But um, again, you know, I think Mike mentioned it before. I can't remember who, but they said it takes a, a village to raise you know, a strong recruiter, strong account manager, and we're all invested in each employee that comes into our office because we know that this person is going to help us meet our team goals and we want to see them succeed. So everyone, not just the leader in your office, not just the back office trainers, but everyone gets involved. You know, they're shadowing sessions with not just, again, your branch leader, but, you know, people who maybe started a couple months before you. So you can make a connection with them and see, you know, what that looks like from their perspective, but then also a senior person. And so um, we definitely take that very seriously and training is a, is a big part of the job. And we want to make sure that you're armed with the tools in order to be successful and overcome objections and things like that. 
So thanks, Taylor. And does someone want to speak to what the account manager training looks like, whether you've been in the recruiter chair first or come straight in as an account manager and how that is structured? Mike may have been in the, the training program most recently. So oh, yeah. I don't know. It's probably <laughs> changed just a little bit since I did mine. Uh, Mike, can you speak to this? Yeah. Um, kind of like Taylor said, the, the training is really robust in the recruiter role. Um, but AM training, as you're transitioning from recruiter, is like a completely different language. Um, you know, it's kind of, and I, mine was actually kind of weird because um, we, I did training during COVID. So everything was set up for like virtual meetings and like virtual type of stuff. So like none of the outside out of office activities, anything like that. So it was a little bit different on that end. Um, but it definitely, you know, teaches you how to you manage your own business and manage, you know, your clients and everything else like that. Um, I want to say it was four, maybe it was six weeks. It might have been four to six weeks. I can't remember exactly, but, um, you know, it really ramps up after the first week. So if you guys are thinking about going into it, it, it gets really intense, but you'll have, you know, good training and development people along with you. And it's really just about repetition and, you know, live practicing with everyone else in your office. And Mike, they have, I think there's a few milestones throughout, right? Like there's certain things that you would need to test out for, or, or oh, is yeah. there a couple different, are there a couple, couple different phases where that happens? Yeah. Yeah. There's um, three different phases they usually go through. Um, so the first phase would be like a cold call. So you would, you know, practice your cold calls with the training and development, you know, have your pitch down and pretty much try to get the client bought into having a meeting with you. The second phase is on the meeting. So you're actually on the first meeting with the client there. Um, you may not discuss any business, more so just getting to know, you know, what that person is responsible for and, um, you know, what they support. So relationship building. And then finally, um, the last part of the cycle would be um, taking a rec or a position uh, to where you qualify exactly what the client needs. And you will have to test out on all three of those um, as you're in training. I think that speaks to to some of the intangibles. I, I, I'm seeing like a common theme of questions of like, okay, but what does it take to be successful? We use some adjectives, but a lot of that is like having that investigative mindset of like reading and reacting in conversations, understanding like where, you know, Mike was talking about cold calls and things like that. We don't work off of a script per se. So it's, you know, it's reading and reacting in conversations and having fun with it. We're talking to people. We're not selling printers, right? We're, sell we're selling a service. And so um, we want to have fun with it. And them connecting with you as a person, whether you're in the recruiter role or in the sales role is going to be what sets you apart from, not only competitors, but uh, just as an individual and a salesperson as well. I think that was a great covering of all the training. I think one thing that in you know my time at Apex that I've also learned that there is additional trainings you can take to kind of just learn more and make you a more rounded, well-rounded employee, different things like that. Programs like those ERGs that allow you to kind of connect with people and learn more, not only professionally, but also personally that really help you grow and make you a better employee without really knowing you're being a better employee, just because you're personally changing and making changes in that regard as well. Let's see. We also got some questions around compensation and how that's structured and what that looks like um, for us at Apex. If somebody wants to kind of cover what at a high level that looks like. So I don't want to like hog the room. I'm, not, I'm just yeah. making sure. <laughs> you want me to take that one? Anyone? Go ahead, Taylor. Okay. You're good. Okay. So um, the way that we're compensated at Apex is we do have a base salary and we also are um, compensated with commission. And essentially the way that that works is we are paid a portion of um, the profit that comes from putting someone to work. So Apex gets paid for our services. Um, when we do um, find someone for our client, it usually looks like um, a contract or contract to hire basis. We do permanent work as well, but that's more of like a smaller portion of our business. Um, and so when they're hired on as a contractor, they're a W-2 Apex employee, and then they are essentially subcontracted out to our client and they work on our client's site now remotely. Um, and so every hour that they work, you know, we are billing our client for our services to carry their W-2, their benefits, 401k, we're essentially their background, HR, our um, portion and and since they are our employee, we do you know charge for our services, um, and so you're paid a portion of that, um, and depending on where you're at as 
far as if you're a recruiter, a professional recruiter, senior professional recruiter, same for account management. There's different levels of account management tiers as well. Um, we'll kind of determine what that uh, commission bracket may look like. Um, so again, it's a base, base salary plus commission. Does that, do they cover it? <laughs> Any yep, questions? Got it. Yep. And I'll just, I'll hop in real quick on that. I'll just say that it's, it's a base salary and it's truly a base salary and that it covers your bases, right? Right. And it's, it's, I love the fact that Apex, this was a part of the decision-making process for me as well, but I love the fact that Apex was willing to invest in me while I was getting ramped up because when I first got into it, it was intimidating. It was technology, had no clue what was going on. And it gave me, it allowed me time to really get acclimated to my new environment and understand how the business worked. And I wasn't stressing about, you know, you, you talk about other sales jobs, there's other sales jobs out there that they say, yeah, sink or swim. Good luck to you. you you're on commission hundred percent on day one. And it's like, Oh no, thank you. Right. And so that's why I, there's another reason that I really liked apex is that it had that blend and it allowed me enough time to get ramped up. And, you know, again, the, the part of the base salary, the base salary is there to, again, cover bases. It's not there for you to live off of forever. Like the goal is for you to eventually start earning on commissions and then blow the base salary out of the water. And that's, that's really what it's there for. And so that's my take. Sorry. No, that's great yeah. Thanks for adding that on Kyle. Yeah. Um, let's see what else we get questions about. One thing we were asked about, you know, what is the overall company goals? Like what is Apex looking to do in the next few years? You know, where are we headed? What is Apex's goal with that? I can take that. So um, we actually have our, our earnings call this afternoon. We're a publicly traded company, so you can definitely um, see what that report looks like today. But we're really one of the fastest growing companies in our sector and, and one of the largest um, growing companies in our sector. So I think you you could see a lot of um, information on that report, but really we're like looking to grow with our clients. So I come from our national accounts team. And what that means is that we're really looking to continue to grow with some of the leading companies in the US. So we already do business with about 50%, close to 50% of the Fortune 1000 companies. And so we're obviously just looking to continue to build that footprint and to continue to service our clients. I think the other thing that we're looking um, to do just in general as a company is really to add value to our clients um, and add value to our contract employees. And, and that means just bringing them the best like technology solutions. Um, I in particular oversee all of our food and beverage clients. So if any of you have um, like gone on to a Chipotle app recently, or Starbucks app, or maybe like order groceries to pick up um, from your grocery store. Those are some of the clients that I um, service. And we're really just looking to like help um, accelerate those type of clients into um, a digital transformation to make sure that they're better servicing their customers. So hopefully that, that answers the question. <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Kristen. Um, we got another question about, you know, work week to week. Is it intermittent? Is it on and off for a few months? Or what does that look like with our clients? Is it a pretty steady flow of work coming in both in the recruiter seat as well as the account management seat? Like as far as the positions that we're working yeah, on? So like are the positions like, are you always having something to work on? Is it kind of like you're trying to find something to work on? That kind of thing. Yeah, I'd say I've never had a bored day at Apex. That's for sure. <laughs> Not once. Yeah. It's busy. Even if it's not in your office busy, it could be busy in another office. There's national accounts. I mean, it's it's busy. Yeah, I think from the account manager perspective, right, you may have slower weeks, but you're not, you know, sitting back on the couch and, you know, doing a Netflix binge. You're trying to develop business and, you know, meet new managers and drive the process. Um, so your accounts may be slow for a little bit, right? A lot of our accounts were slow at the beginning of um, COVID as I tried to figure out what the next move was going to be. Um, for myself, I specialize in healthcare. So um, my first two months of work from home COVID was the busiest I've ever been because all the hospitals were staffing up IT just to get all their remote workers um, situated at home. Uh, and then it got a little bit quieter for a little bit, right? And now it's building back up as you know some of the hospitality here in Orlando begins to build back up. I think from the recruiter chair, a um, little bit less of that because you guys are, are there recruiters apex or, you know, skill siloed. So there's always going to hopefully be a Java position for them to work on. Um, but we do have slow periods, just like any business, but never, never anything less than 40 hours. That's for sure. I think that was one of the questions actually, like how does apex help with like the cyclical nature of just like sales. And I think chance you definitely hit on that for sure is that there are slow periods, but 
it's, you know, the, the point is to evaluate what's causing that to be slow. Is it, you know, we don't have a strong relationships. Is it that the, you know, there's a, you know, global pandemic that might be causing that. Hopefully this is the last one. Maybe. Yeah, that we experience in that, but it's usually, I mean, everything encompasses IT nowadays. I mean, there's not an industry that's not affected by IT. That's why, you know, I'm blessed to be in this industry. It was kind of, I fell into it, but I'm very grateful for it because it's only growing, you know, companies are creating more innovative apps and things like that, which is causing them to engage companies like Apex to help them with these transformation projects, or maybe it's just a couple positions, or maybe it's an entire you know, over overhaul of their IT, whatever the case it may be, we're here to help them and um, they need it. So I think Kyle, you mentioned this earlier that one of the things that bother you is people who leave too soon, they give up too early, right? I think you had mentioned that and kind of what is a good soft skill or something you need for this role. Um, and that's it. Some people come in and they're in that low cyclical period for whatever clients they're assigned to. And, you know, they, I've seen it before. I mean, I've only been here for four years, but I've seen people come in, they spend a year, they're like, ah, oh, you know, it's just not going to work out for me. They leave, the new person gets put on the account, and then that account goes to the moon, right? Um, actually, Kristen can talk to this because I support one of the accounts that she's on. They hire once every two years in Orlando, right? But I've had such good relationships that every time they do, they hire from us. But it's such a small part of my portfolio that it, you know, I'm not sitting around waiting for two years. But that's why you balance out your portfolio and you kind of develop those relationships. That is great. And we will wrap up with one question for all of you. So if you, I know we talked about what initially made you choose Apex, but what is your favorite thing about your job now? So we'll start with, I guess, how we're going across on my screen. So we'll start with Kristen. Um, I love it that I get to connect with a lot of different businesses, a lot of different clients um, and learn a lot about their business. And then also just the people that I work with. Like I have, you know, some of the best teams that I work with and I love um, building them up and, and, you know, training them and working hand in hand with them just to make us all better. Those are my two favorite things. <laughs> right. And then we'll go to Chance. I'm just going across how it looks on my screen. So we'll go to Chance next. Yeah, I have two things that really stick out to me. Um, I originally wanted, I was originally fast tracked to med school. There's a whole long story there. You can catch me on LinkedIn. I'll tell you that story on how I ended up in IT staffing with a biology degree. Um, but I love going to some of the, my clients here in Orlando when I'm not, you know, working and being like, oh, I had a part in that because, you know, my contractors helped build that application for these patients or, you know, hey, I'm at this theme park and that, that, that new ride, my designers helped put that together. Um, so it's kind of cool to have a part, even if I'm a few, you know, um, links away from it. Um, but the second thing is because it's a relationship driven business, the longer you are in it, the easier the job gets. Um, mm -hmm. I had a manager call me the other day. I hadn't talked to her in, you know, probably six months. She left one of my clients. She's at a new client. She needs my help. We had a brand new contract signed and potentially a huge project coming just because we made a good relationship and we worked together well. Right. And so the longer you're in it, the more money you make, the easier the job gets. It's a that simple. Perfect. Taylor, we will go to you on your favorite part. Yeah, um, we're currently right now kind of piggybacking off of chances. We're currently right now um, staffing for help with the COVID vaccine, which is really nice. Um, definitely nice to be a part of those efforts. But, you know, aside from the people, which, again, I, I just can't stress that enough. Um, it definitely is as a businesswoman and coming in, not knowing what I wanted to do. Um, you know, really getting a chance to kind of see a behind the curtain or behind the scenes viewpoint to some of the world's largest companies and how they operate, how they manage their business, uh, what their budgets look like, how they hire, um, what really cool initiatives like, you know, building a new application or COVID related or, or whatever the case may be, um, getting to see that across multiple clients is something really cool. Um, and I realized how much it's developed me as a person and professional. Um, so again, getting to see that like behind the scenes viewpoint to um, really big companies has been very exciting and thrilling. Thank you, Taylor. And now we'll go to Kyle. Oh man, favorites. I don't think anybody named the one thing, right? I think there's there's multiple things that we like about what we do. Um, I'll say to blanket it, we'll go the known and the unknown. So I, the known is the relationships that I have in place, right? Whether that's with my clients or with my, with my team internally, like that's what makes it so easy to get up and, and go to work is because the, the relationships that I've forged over the years, and it just makes it fun. 
if, if you're not having fun doing this job, if you're not having fun doing any job, it ain't worth it, right? So you better have a good time with what you're doing because we, we dedicate way too much time Monday through Friday. Um, oh, speaking of relationships, I got a director that's uh, texting me right now. Excuse me. Um, so, um, but yeah, I would say that that's the known part, right? And then the unknown, like I, I every day is, is you have no idea what's going to happen. You have a decent idea, but there's so many things that can shift throughout the day and a new, a new initiative, a new um, relationship, um, a new meeting. And so those are the things that are, they keep it really exciting too, because the unknown is, is why we do this as well. Cause we're kind of going into uncharted territories and trying to saturate new accounts or, or meet new groups. And so um, I would say, yeah, if, if I'm just the blanketed, I'll say the, the known and the unknown. And last but not least, we'll go to Mike. Yeah, just pretty much piggybacking off for everybody. Um, there's a lot of things I like about the job. I know some people come in, um, you know, expecting their first job not to be exactly what the, what it is. But, you know, I can safely say that uh, Apex is everything I've, I've looked forward to and more, um, you know, just being able to to come in and work and, you know, not just work for myself, but, you know, help out the clients, help out candidates get jobs and everything. So I'm really big on that. Another good thing is just learning about the accounts, kind of like Taylor said, because um, I, I mostly worked all federal government stuff. So, you know, all their projects and seeing behind the scenes what they're doing and, and you know, connecting that back to some, some of my best friends that work for some of those clients. You know, it's pretty interesting to see how it all comes full circle. Um, and then obviously just, like I said before, just the relationship building piece of it. That is great. Well, thank you all for your participation today. We loved hearing all your answers and all your different experiences within Apex. I'm going to pass it back over to Way Up, who's going to announce our winners from our swag giveaway. Yes. So thank you so much. And a great event overall. If you're interested in amazing opportunities at Apex, go ahead and check out that their company profile, which I just posted the link to in the chat. And again, thank you for attending today and have a great evening.